All right, welcome everybody. We're gonna get started here. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for attending. I'm very excited to be doing the first online live training of 2015. So we are testing out the Google Live broadcast for the first time and a screen share slideshow uh, whiteboard, online whiteboard as well. So we are doing testing of two new systems here. So bear with me if we have any glitches. I don't think we will. So this um, online training is is for my online HVAC students and it and it culminates uh, modules one, two, and three because the refrigeration cycle is covered in depth in module one, two, and three. And this is just gonna, one of a uh, small live training is that we do just to reinforce uh, what's what they're learning online as well. And I've invited all of you to attend because this is our, our beta test. So I, I wanted to have as many folks as possible just to see how it handled uh, large numbers of people. So welcome, if I can help you in any way, just let me know. So let's get started. Okay, so tonight we're gonna to talk about a fixed orifice system. And um, we'll go over the refrigeration cycle of a fixed orifice system and just review the refrigeration cycle. We're also going to review some key terms that we're gonna be using as well. Then we'll go through the refrigeration cycle with an undercharge system and see how that affects superheat and subcooling and why. And then we'll do the same thing with the overcharge. Um, I, we're gonna be about 30 to 45 minutes. I will keep it moving along. I know it's, it's uh, getting late for a lot of folks. And then we'll have a question and answer period. And uh, Andy, I saw your question there. Um, I, I'll, I'll talk with you about the vintage soda machines here at the end after we get done and see if this pertains, I might be able to help you off offline here. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so quick review. We need to remember that heat is, uh, are actually molecules in motion. The, the faster these molecules vibrate and move around, the more heat we have. And I like to tell my students to get cold and cool out of their vocabulary and talk about more heat and less heat. And remember that you know if we look at uh, if we look at this these temperatures right here, they are cold as far as we're concerned. They uh, at minus two hundred and minus three hundred and fifty degrees Fahrenheit. That's cold to us, but it still contains heat and it still has uh, molecules in motion. So if we put these two blocks next to each other. Uh, the minus 200 degree Fahrenheit um, block of material and matter has more molecules in motion than the minus 350 degree Fahrenheit block. And those and that heat will flow from the substance that has more heat to the substance that has less heat. All right, so heat flow goes from some, a substance, substance with more heat to a substance with less heat. Remember, heat, heat are molecules in motion. All right, so we also talk about gas laws in modules one and two. And this is an example of a piston. And in this, it has um, an air cylinder at atmospheric pressure with air in it, but the principles are the same. So the air inside of this piston has molecules. Those molecules are in motion, are in motion and are bouncing lazily around in here. It has low pressure and the temperature is fairly low. But as we move this piston upwards, those molecules have left space to bounce around and they start to vibrate faster and faster in here. And what that does is increases the pressure and and because they're moving faster, um, it, those molecules in motion increases the heat. So there's a direct relationship between um, pressure and temperature. So as the pressure increases in, in a uh, system, in our air conditioning system, so does the temperature. And then, and then conversely, if we if we decrease the pressure in the in this vessel, then the the temperature goes down, and vice versa. 